Hi guys, in this video we'll take a look at introduction to straight lines, equations of a straight line, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what is the form of an equation of a straight line? We know that we can form a relationship between two variables. In particular, we can have values of x and y, and then given certain x values, say x equals minus 1, x equals 1, and x equals 2, we can have associated y values, say y equals 1, y equals 5, and y equals 7. We can then plot these points on a graph. Namely, we have our minus 1, 1 here, and then we have our 1, 5, which is here, and then we have our 2, 7, which is here. Joining these points forms a straight line, for which we can find an equation. So we have these three points, and we can plot a straight line which goes through all three. We'd like to be able to find an equation which relates y to x. Given a value of x, we'd like to be able to find the associated value of y. So how can we find an equation of a straight line? The most common equation of a straight line tells us the gradient and the y-intercept. We often write y is equal to the gradient m multiplied by x plus c. And again, m is our gradient, and c is often referred to as our y-intercept. Recall that the gradient is the rate of change. If we have two points on the graph, i.e. x1, y1, and x2, y2, then we can calculate the gradient of this line. We often write this as equal to m, and then the formula is y2 minus y1, divided by x2 minus x1. Now the y-intercept is the point at which the line crosses the y-axis. So here, say the line crosses the y-axis at a y-value of 2, then this value 2 would be the y-intercept. This may be, for example, the line y is equal to 1 half x plus 2. So in particular, this corresponds to a gradient of 1 half and a y-intercept of 2. This is the value on the end not attached to the x. This means that we can form the equation of any straight line knowing the gradient and the y-intercept. As to more examples, let's say we have y is equal to 2x plus 4. This corresponds to the gradient m being equal to 2 and the y-intercept c being equal to 4. Similarly, we could have y is equal to minus 5x plus 10. This would correspond to m equals minus 5 and c is equal to 10. In fact, we can find the equation of a straight line if we are given the gradient and any point on the straight line. In order to find the equation of the straight line, all we need is a point, i.e. some x1, y1, on the line, as well as the gradient m. If these two pieces of information are given, we can write down the equation of the line straight away as y minus the value of y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1. All we need is x1, y1 and m, and we can substitute into this equation and get our equation for the straight line. And so given this straight line, and let's say we know its gradient, m, and just one single point on the line, which is given to us in the form x1, y1, then we are able to find the equation of the line using the above equation. Consider a line with a point 2, 4 and a gradient of 1. So we know that the point 2, 4 is on the line, and we also know that the gradient, which we write as m, is equal to 1. We substitute the coordinates and the gradient into the equation to find the general equation of the line. So we have in general our y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1. Substituting in our values, our x1 is the 2 value, our y1 is our 4, and our m is 1. 
And so we have y minus 4 is equal to 1 multiplied by the x minus 2. And so by expanding out the 1 times and adding the 4 to both sides, we get that y is equal to, well, x minus 2, because it's only a 1. And then we have a plus 4. And so finally, we get it in the required form, y is equal to x, and then we have a plus 2. I.e. we have a gradient of 1 and a y-intercept of 2. If we are only instead given two points the line passes through, we must first find the gradient. So let's say we're given a first point on the curve, which is labelled as A, and this point is 3,5. And similarly, we're given the point B on the curve, which is minus 2,10. We can use our formula to calculate the gradient, and so we have that m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And if we use our x1, y1 as a and x2, y2 as b, then we have 10 for our y2 minus 5 for our y1 divided by minus 2 for our x2 and then minus a further 3 for our x1. And so we get 5 over minus 5 and this gives us our gradient as minus 1. We can then use the gradient and a point to form the equation of the straight line. Let's take our point A on the line, which is 3, 5. We now also have the gradient M, which is minus 1. And therefore, we can use our equation, which is that Y minus Y1 is equal to M multiplied by X minus X1. And then we take our x on y1 to be 3, 5, and so we get y minus the 5 is equal to minus x minus x1, which is x minus 3. And then we expand this out and add the 5 to both sides, and so we get y is equal to minus x, and then we have a plus 3 and a plus 5, which gives us our final answer for the line y is equal to minus x plus 8. We can write equations of straight lines involving only rational coefficients and constants in a different form. In this situation, we can write a straight line in the form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. Where we have our a, b and c being integers. So, for example, the following lines are in the correct form. 2x plus 3y plus 4 equals 0, or minus x plus y minus 5 equals 0, as well as, say, x plus 5 equals 0. However, the following are in an incorrect form. For example, 3x plus 2y equals 4, we would need to subtract the 4 to the left hand side to get it in the right form, or perhaps 1 half x plus 10y plus 5 equals 0. This is in incorrect form since a, b and c are not integers in this case, since a is equal to 1 half. We could double both sides of the equation and this would get it into the right form. Similarly, 9x plus a third y plus a half equals 0 is not in the correct form either. We could multiply by 6 to both sides of the equation and so get rid of the 1 third and the 1 half. Equations of the form y equals mx plus c with rational m and c can be rearranged into this form. So for example, let's say we have the line of y is equal to minus x plus 8. We can add x and subtract 8 from both sides and we get x plus y minus 8 equals 0. This is in the correct form ax plus by plus c equals 0. And so long as m the gradient and c the y-intercept are rational, we can always rearrange into this form. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to find the gradient and the y-intercept of the line y equals minus x plus 7 and to sketch a graph of the line. Our first step is to compare the equation to the general equation of a straight line. 
we have our straight line, which is y is equal to minus x plus 7. And by comparing to the general equation, y is equal to mx plus c, we see that m is equal to minus 1, and that c is equal to 7. And so for our sketch, our second step is to plot the y-intercept. And so all we have to do is to plot the 7 somewhere, say, here. Our third step is to recall the equation of the gradient. We have that the gradient, which is denote as m, is given by y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 for two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, on the line. Our fourth step is to set the gradient equal to minus 1 and pick a rise and a run which work. In this example, we have our gradient as being equal to minus 1. And remember that gradient is equal to the rise divided by the run. These are the y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1, respectively. And so we can pick nice values of the rise and the run such that this works. Consider a rise of just minus 1 and a run of 1. A quick note. A rise of minus 1 is equivalent to a fall of 1. The fifth step is to sketch the line using the rise and the run. Here we have this 7 for our y-intercept, and then we have a rise of minus 1, so we go down by minus 1, and then a run of 1. And so we have our y-intercept here, and then we have this point here. And then we can sketch the line by joining up these two points. This gives us our line. Our second example asks us to rearrange the equation y equals 2 thirds x plus 5 into the general equation of a straight line ax plus by plus c equals 0. Our first step is to recall the general equation of a straight line. The general equation of a straight line is ax plus by plus c equals 0. Our second step is to move all the terms to the left-hand side. We have our expression for y, which is y is equal to 2 thirds x plus 5. And so by looking at our general equation, it's a sensible option to move all of the terms to the right-hand side. We can start by subtracting our 2 thirds x, and so we get y minus 2 thirds x is equal to 5. And then we can also subtract our 5 as well. It's sensible to put our minus 2 thirds x on the left hand side because our general form goes ax first and then we have our plus y and then we have a minus 5 is equal to 0. Our third step is to multiply through so that all of the coefficients become integers. We have minus 2 thirds x plus y minus 5 is equal to 0. The only non-integer term we have here is the minus 2 thirds x, and so multiplying through by 3 will give us integers. And so we end up with a minus 2x, and then we have a plus 3y, and then we have a minus 15 is equal to 0. Our fourth step, therefore, is to write down the equation of the graph with integer coefficients. Our equation is minus 2x plus 3y minus 15 equals 0. Our last example asks us to find the equation of the following graph, which passes through the points 0, 1, 2, 5, and 5, 11. Here is the graph. Our first step is to observe the y-intercept as the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. So here is our y-intercept, which has been given to us, and therefore this is equal to 1. Our second step is to recall the definition of the gradient. We have that the gradient which is equal to m, is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Our third step is to draw a right angle triangle between two points. We take our points 2, 5 and 5, 11, and then we draw a right angle triangle. And it is sensible to find the length between the right angle. And so if we consider our upper point, which is our 5, 11, and then our lower point, which is our 2, 5, the length of the lower side parallel to the x-axis is going to be 5 minus 2, which is 3. And similarly, doing the same thing for the vertical, which is parallel to the y-axis, we take our 11 
and then we subtract our 5 and we get 6. Our fourth step is to substitute the coordinates into the equation to find the gradient. We have that the gradient is equal to m, which is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now, we've essentially already found the rise and the run, but from this perspective, we can think about it slightly differently. We can have our two points, which are 2, 5 and 5, 11, as our x1, y1 and our x2, y2. So then our y2 is our 11, our y1 is our 5, our x2 is our 5 as well, and then x1 is 2. And so as we found, the rise is 6 and the run is 3, which gives us an m value of 2. Our last step is to write the equation of the line using the gradient and the y-intercept. We found that the gradient, which is m, is equal to 2. And similarly, we found that the y-intercept, right at the beginning, which is c, is equal to 1. And therefore, comparing with the general equation of a line, y equals mx plus c, all we do is substitute our values of m and c in, and so we get y is equal to 2x plus 1. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappify smiley face, and together, let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.